Hi, and welcome to the Mayor's Report. I'm Northampton Mayor David Narkowitz, and this is my recurring program on Northampton Community Television, where we go around the city and talk about some of the issues and projects that are happening. And today, uh, being the middle of summer, um, I thought it was appropriate that we talk about one of the real gems here in the city, and that's Look Park, or the more formal name is Frank Newhall Look Memorial Park. And I'm joined today by the executive director of Look Park, Sean Porter. Sean, thanks for being on the Mayor's Report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for coming. Yeah. I think, um, you know, one of the most interesting duties that I found out that I had when I became mayor, and many people may not even know it, is that uh, the mayor of Northampton is actually uh, one of the members of the Board of Trustees of Look Park. Um, but I think there's a lot of confusion about Look Park and how it operates and how it's funded. Yeah. So I hope today we can talk a little bit about the history of the park, how it operates, and some of the really fun and exciting programs that you and your staff offer here. So I guess the, probably the best place to start is who was Frank Newhall Look? Frank Newhall Look was actually a very influential man uh, in, the, in Florence and throughout New Hampton, Northampton. He was a, uh, the president of the uh, Northampton prophylactic company, a brush company. Okay. And, uh, so what, what many people knew as Pro Brush. Pro Brush, modern, yeah, that was his company. Prophylactic yep. brush company. Um, he was a great man, very uh, philanthropic, um, definitely loved the community, loved Northampton, mm -hmm. uh, and that love is why Fanny, his wife, mm -hmm. devoted this park in his name. Uh, so, so it was actually his wife Fanny who uh, essentially gifted the land yep. uh, to the city uh, as well as endowed the park for the construction and ongoing maintenance of the park. Yeah, in 1926, Fanny decided that she wanted to create a lasting memory to her husband. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the biggest parts of that actually is that fountain that sits in front whenever you drive in. You see okay. the Frank Newhall Look Memorial Park Fountain. Um, mm -hmm. And that was her first thing she put in the, the uh, deed to the park was, I'd like to have a fitting tribute to my husband, and that was the fitting tribute. And um, the park actually sits on what used to be the Warner Farm. Okay. The original park was 110 acres mm -hmm. and uh, was gifted to the city and set up as a nonprofit with a self perpetuating board of trustees. Okay. So there's a board of trustees, uh, six members. Yes. One of them is the mayor, whoever you the mayor <laughs> happens to be. It's me now, yep, but it's now. whoever the mayor is, ex officio. Um, and, uh, and, and part of that as well, not just the construction of the park, et cetera, but then there's also a, a trust to help pay yep. for maintenance of the park going forward. How long did the, how long did the construction take? How, how, I mean, this must have been a, you know, people see Look Park today, it must have been quite an undertaking to, to build out the park over time. Yeah, it's actually quite, a, quite an impressive feat. Uh, Robert Washburn Beal, he's a uh, landscape architect mm -hmm. out of the uh, Boston area. He came down and was uh, really kind of blown away by the, the features the park had. Uh, mm -hmm. Some things people don't realize is where the gazebo is, you used to be actually able to see Mount Tom. Hmm. So that was the Mount Tom lookout. Now that the trees have grown so tall, you, it's okay. not a visible spot anymore. Yeah. Uh, but he was really blown away by the, the park and what the features potential. the park had and yeah. all the potential it had. So construction started in 1928. The park itself opened July 4th, 1930. Huh, on Independence so, Day. Yes, yeah, so it was about two years uh, in construction. Mm -hmm. The fountain was the first piece put in the park. Shortly thereafter, there was the pool and the pool house. Uh, the farmhouse was moved from its location over to what is now the admin building now. Mm -hmm. um, the overall park itself was designed to be a country park. Mm -hmm. but they wanted to add additional features to it. Um, something like the train, which has been in the park since 1930. Not okay. the current one, but there has been a train in the park Some since kind of a train, yes. yeah. Interesting, and, and I, I know we talked earlier that there was some concern about the location, and, yes. and uh, some were concerned that you know this was too far remote from Northampton, but I know uh, Mrs. Look really was insistent that it be in yep. Florence, and, uh, and so, how did that all play out? Uh, she, she had really identified this land as where yeah. she wanted it to be. Yeah, she wanted Florence. Obviously, that was where their, their center of life was. They, mm -hmm. grew, they lived on Beacon Street. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yep. Uh, I forget the house number, but it was, I believe, 45 or 60-something. Okay. That area. Beautiful home. Um, so she definitely insisted that it be in Florence. And one of the things the city had an issue with is it was too far out of downtown. Now, mm -hmm. to us nowadays, that seems kind of funny and foolish, but... 
with the bike path and the roads exactly. leading, leading right to the park. But at the time, there wasn't you know a ton of vehicles and a mm -hmm. ton of people riding their bike up bike paths that they didn't exist at the time. So exactly. it seems a little far out of town. And one of the other issues is when she first went to donate the land to the city, she was going to give two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, which in nineteen twenty-six was quite a mm. quite a amount of money. Um, but she wanted the city to pay four thousand dollars per year mm -hmm. for the maintenance of the park. Okay. So some uh, people in the city got upset considering it was uh, going to be a self-perpetuating board, so the city wasn't going to have control over the board, so mm -hmm. they wanted to make sure it wasn't quote-unquote taxation without representation. Okay. So Fannie heard about this, and they went back and forth for a while, but then Fannie decided to say, okay, I will do increase my donation to, I believe it was $350,000, mm -hmm. and um, I will put a trust in effect to pay for the maintenance of the park. We'll still have a self-perpetuating board and I still get my park. Okay. So she was a very strong woman and a very smart woman mm -hmm. and definitely uh, you know, brought this beautiful park to yeah. Northampton. Florida. And this is not uncommon. I mean, Northampton's very fortunate because we, we're, we're fortunate because we have many benefactors uh, like the looks uh, who've, you know, things like Judge Forbes who gave us Forbes Library. Yeah. A very similar arrangement, not quite owned by the city, but run by a by a separate elected board. Yeah. Um, Smith Vocational again was a gift of. Uh, I mean, Smith College, frankly, was a gift. Uh, you know, again, um, set up uh, and and so one of those really unique uh, arrangements. But I also think it's important, especially what you just said, because I think oftentimes people come to the park and they assume it's a city park, right? Because um, many towns around us you know, have city parks, uh, Forest Park, places like that, right. that are actually municipally owned, municipally maintained, it's part of the budget. So there's no city tax dollars that pay for the operation of this park. Right, that's one of the really beautiful things about this park is that this 157 acre, beautiful, pristine park with mm -hmm. great attractions for the kids, that's a safe, family fun, affordable place, doesn't cost the taxpayers anything unless they drive in. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if, at that, it's really not that horrible, especially for season pass holders in the area. Um, the park doesn't cost any tax dollars. It's self self funded. Um, we are fortunate to still have a trust that helps to offset any shortages in our our budget. Mm -hmm. And you know, we still maintain a really high quality facility. Mm -hmm. And you know, again, well, I think that's important. To, I think that's important for people to know because often there are people who question sometimes when they pull up that they have to pay a fee. Yes. Um, because they assume this is a city park and yep. you know I pay my taxes so I should just be able to come but actually there's just really tax dollars aren't aren't being funneled to the park or paying for the operation of the park right one of the great things is you know we don't cost any tax dollars but uh, the facility the garden house that we're in now we pay property tax of about fifty five hundred dollars a mm -hmm. year on mm -hmm. paid meals taxes with all the different food products we sell and you know it, it's something where we actually give a lot in taxes back into the city. So and, and definitely attract a lot of visitors to yes. Northampton. We uh, run about a half a million visitors per year. Half a million. Yes. Wow, that's incredible. And, and I know, great. and you know, and there's also generations of people, myself included, that, you know, Look Park has a special mm -hmm. place in their childhood memory. I, I remember not riding this train, but <laughs> riding a train when I was a the kid. Uh, liner, yeah. The paddle boats, you know, uh, and when you come here on any given weekend, you'll see lots of young families, uh, families picnicking uh, and other mm -hmm. kinds of other kinds of events. So give people a sense, uh, you know, what does it take to run a park of this size? You have, uh, you know, the, you know, things are have to be mowed, maintained. There's lots of beautiful plantings. Yes. Uh, there's all the attractions. Give a sense of the size of the staff that it takes to run the park. Uh, we have five full-time year-round uh, maintenance staff, but mm -hmm. in the summertime, we bring in a number of uh, part-time staff and uh, seasonal staff mm -hmm. to help with the peak season. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a ton of work that goes into opening up for the season. Um, for example, this past year, when it was snowing in April, yeah. that set us way behind. But mm -hmm. The crew really responded, they really stepped up and they really got the park looking great again this year. Um, we employ roughly 60 plus uh, youth from the city mm -hmm. every year, which is a great plus for the city's economy. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, we have uh, five directors and myself. So we have a very solid staff that really works hard. Um, there's a separate manager for the garden house. We have mm -hmm. a director for the operations. 
uh, development director. So it, it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. And the garden house is a somewhat more recent addition to the park. Yep. Uh, this is where the old uh, swimming pool facility used to be. And, yep. and then I forget the year that, that uh, the conversion happened. I want to say it was 87 was the, when we closed the pool. Okay. Um, and I don't remember off the top of my head the date we opened yeah. this. But it's been 10 plus years now. And it's, and it's become a place that people have weddings, people have graduation parties. Yes. Uh, I know the, the city has its annual mayor's dance for the kids yep. at JFK every year. I've been to a few of those. Yep. Um, and, and things like Santa's trains, uh, you know, uh, seasonal events like that as well. So, yep. and, uh, and obviously this provides revenue to the park which yes. can then be funneled back into the, the maintenance and operations. Yeah, there's, there's no real profit that we make out of this mm -hmm. facility. All that money goes back in the operations of this facility, the garden house, mm -hmm. and the park itself. Um, one thing people aren't really aware of is we actually are a full nonprofit, um, and every year our trust actually helps support our budget. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, this garden house is actually very vital to the park's budget in the future. Yeah, that's important as well for people to understand. Like most nonprofits, and especially ones that have endowments, you have to carefully watch that endowment yes. to make sure that it is, will last forever. And, uh, and so I know that, that the board, since, since I've been on it, has been very cognizant of that fact. Yes. You mentioned at the beginning, um, you mentioned the fountain, and I know that, uh, that you know, there's been some capital projects over time in the park. People may notice it was just repaved mm -hmm. recently. That's a major capital a project. project. Yes. But I know that there's an effort underway to really look at that fountain, mm -hmm. um, which is such a signature thing that people see when they when they enter the park and as you said earlier it's one of the things that uh, Fannie Mae look insisted be you know sort of a defining feature yep. as a as a memorial to her husband now there's an effort underway to try to restore that fountain it's kind of fallen into disrepair yeah the fountain um, original design it was only designed one brick thick for New England that's rather and it was also 19 you know 28 29 mm -hmm. the building codes were a little bit different then yeah um, there's no joints for freezing. Um, so basically what's happened is that over time with New England weather, it's deteriorated quite a bit. And we are working on uh, with Tom Douglas to get a new design for the fountain, well, not a new design, but to you know, replicate the fountain as close to its original beauty as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and it's gonna be very difficult to tell if it's a new setup. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna take all the limestone down, all of the carved uh, stone down and Basically, the brick is going to be what's new, and the tiles are going to be what's new, and the fountain will be a new, energy-efficient, uh, low-water-use fountain. But, yeah, we are working on that. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to be going for CPA funding, we hope, soon. And okay. That's yeah. Community Preservation Act yes. funding, which, yep. is, uh, which this would be eligible for probably as a historic uh, feature, but as well because it's a park. Yes. Uh, and, and parks and recreation are one of the eligible uh, funding sources. So, and, uh, and obviously, there will probably be an opportunity for members of the public to donate to that at oh, some yes. future date. I assume there'll be a capital campaign. Yeah, we well. don't expect the Community Preservation Act to um, cover the entire okay. bill. We know that. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's quite a hefty bill, of, mm -hmm. um, about $550,000 roughly. Wow. Yes, yeah. so it's a big construction project. So mm -hmm. we will be going out into the community looking for donations from our friends, business mm -hmm. partners, and the community at large just to help us restore such a beautiful fountain that is the gateway to such a beautiful park. Yeah. What are some of the other long-term capital projects that you'll be looking at in the park? Well, we have a, a number of, um, currently the river wall is grown under disrepair. Mm -hmm. um, that's mm -hmm. a fairly large project and because it runs along the, the river, there's a lot of regulations. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now we have an engineering firm looking at that to kind of decide to what extent it needs to be repaired and what the actual cost will be. Mm -hmm. um, we don't expect that to be an, an expensive project. Yeah. And then beyond that, we have um, repairs we have to do in some of the waterways in the mini golf and the bumper boat area. Mm -hmm. We are constantly looking at ways to improve the infrastructure as far as uh, communications, computers, um, mm -hmm. you know, any, anything we could do to update the park and get it to uh, kind of the 21st century. Mm -hmm. And you have, you've had a series of uh, events happening during the summertime, yes. that, um, including the family uh, fourth event that's yes. become such a staple now. I think we're in our third or fourth year, fourth year um, where we have uh, fireworks. And, and uh, so obviously that's great that Look Park has become the home of that. But there's other events that happen. Camps come here. Yep. Um, I, I notice I always see signs for different day camps that are visiting. Mm -hmm. um, give a sense of, uh, 
just how many different programs there could be happening on a given day or week here at the park. <laughs> we have a ton of stuff that goes on. Uh, everything from a children's series program on Tuesday mornings, we have Relay for Life, we've got walks and 5Ks for a variety of different uh, nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have the Northampton Family Fourth, which is a huge event. Uh, we do have a variety of concerts. We have trans performance coming up That's right. at the end yeah. of the month. To raise money to for raise arts money. in the city. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the Northampton Recreation Department uses the grounds for t-ball, for soccer, for the summer camp. Um, and they've been very happy here. We try to provide them with, you know, well, obviously it's a beautiful facility and mm -hmm. it's a great place to send your kids. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have other events like the Haunted Train in October. Ah, uh, yes. And then uh, one of our really great big events is Santa's Trains, mm -hmm. where we transform the garden house into a beautiful Victorian train station. There's train layouts all throughout the building. There's decorated trees, Santa and Mrs. Claus. And what's really unique about that event is with the amount of work that goes into it and the cost that we incur, it is still a free event. And the mm -hmm. trustees are sure they want to keep that free for a long time. Yeah, that's I've had the pleasure of participating and being the yep. station master oh, yes. and conduct, punching yep. kids tickets so when they come and it's just to see them come in their eyes just light up yes. when uh, when they see the model trains and Santa and all that so so it's great yep. so uh, are there other things that people may not know about look park that uh, or just Things you know, I know you've worked here for a while. You were the director previously. You were on the operations, uh, operations yep. staff. Yep. Um, are there things that you learn about the park that you you know as you go through this job? Uh, it's there's such a rich history of the park. So, are there any of those kinds of tidbits or historical tidbits that you find interesting that people may not yeah, know about the park? The park itself, um, just the history of the park. For example, I'm the fourth executive director of the park in 86 years. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. Most of the directors stay 30 plus years. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, you know, kind of one of those positions that once you're here, you never want to leave. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. you can't really be coming into a beautiful park like this every day. Um, a famous name you hear a lot is Vic Christensen. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. He was the uh, police chief for the park. Um, Look Park actually had an official police department prior to us becoming, having a ranger hmm. department. Okay. Um, so they were regular police. Uh, every so often there's a gentleman um, who actually purchased the old Look Park Jeep. Okay. So you'll see it cruising around. I've seen around. it in parades. Yep. I've yep. seen it in, in various parades. Okay. So you'll see him cruising around. He even has a Look Park Ranger shirt we've given him so he can okay. look authentic. Okay. Um, and uh, everybody knows Vic Christensen. Vic Christensen is the uh, namesake of the Christensen, Christensen Zoo. Exactly. Um, which is a neat little zoo that's, you know, not anything like the Forest Park Zoo or, mm -hmm. you know, Lupa or any of those guys. It's a small little zoo, but it's mm -hmm. it's cute. Um, and he was known for you know being a stickler on speed and making sure everybody followed the rules. And mm -hmm. you know it, it's really great hearing different little tidbits and stories about Vic Christensen. Um, and then you followed in the footsteps of Ray Ellerbrook, who yes, was, who's uh, a legend, who's a legend in Northampton, and was our city's longtime recreation director. Yep. And uh, have a, some of our rec fields named after him. So yeah. that that is uh, that's impressive that for a park this old, there's you're in you're in rarefied company as yeah. one of only four uh, executive directors. Yeah, the first gentleman I stay, I believe stayed almost uh, thirty something years. Mm -hmm. uh, he was followed. Actually, here's a neat story: is M. Foss Narum. He was the first park director uh, mm -hmm. for Look Park. He actually passed away in the residence mm -hmm. on the park, and Brian Elliott, who was his the successor um, was given the position with uh, M. Foss Narum, like right at his deathbed, and then Brian Elliott stayed for about 30 plus years. And, and the directors actually used to live on, on the park, yep. uh, which uh, are now the, the that home has been converted into the administrative office, yes. where your where your offices and all of the financial offices, et cetera, yep. are. So the director. Not only was it a beautiful park, but you even had a house. But that's obviously not the case anymore. Right. But, um, but what an interesting history. It is a really yeah. unique history. It's a it, just walking through the house itself. You kind of you feel the history in it, and mm -hmm. you know that there's people that you know ran the park and lived there for the you know, first sixty plus years that the park was around. Mm -hmm. So it was quite unique. And and I know that there's been a lot of work done over time. You mentioned the the trees growing up over time. There's a lot of species of trees here yep. in the park, and I know that you uh, you and your staff take great care to care for them, but also to try to 
let people know about the trees that are here. Mm -hmm. And there's even a program that the park has if people want to donate trees. Yes, we have. Uh, dedicate trees to the yep. park. We have the Ed Atheridge Tree Dedication Program. Mm -hmm. uh, what's great about that is we used to have benches you could purchase in the park, mm -hmm. um, which we ha now have plenty of benches. Mm -hmm. uh, we really don't have more space for benches. So now we always need trees replaced. So mm -hmm. now you could purchase a tree and we'll put a plaque on it with, you know, in loving memory of or in celebration of a wedding. We had a, a couple right in front of the visitor center put a tree up oh. to celebrate their wedding. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a it's a really great program. We do our best to keep up on the trees with 157 acres. It's it's quite an undertaking. Uh, but yeah. every year we lose a few. We need to get a few back and this mm -hmm. is a a perfect fit for the park. Well, for people who love the park that, you know, who may not know about that program, that's a great yeah. way for people who love to spend time here to try to, to memorialize someone. Yes. So obviously, uh, probably didn't have websites back when Fannie <laughs> opened the park, but you <laughs> guys have a, have a website. Yes, uh, we have a great website. Okay. Uh, it was recently redone. Mm -hmm. uh, the gentleman, the guys down at Logic Trail did a great job for us. They okay. created a whole new website, a whole new branding. Florence-based company, that's yep. good. Yep. Fanny, Fanny would approve. Yes, she would. Uh, yeah. We do try to try to support local uh, businesses uh -huh. as much as humanly possible. What's the uh, what's the uh, web address for oh, that? Oh, lookpark.org. That's okay. very good. I almost forgot. Um, and it, it's got a ton of information, including special events and all this different information about the picnics, pavilions, mm -hmm. attractions, and, and just Fun. And it's the great. park's open year round, but all the attractions are not, you know, it's, yep. those are seasonal. When, do, when will you be closing up things like the, the bumper boats and the trains and things for the season? So our, our seasonal schedule starts mid-April with school vacation week is usually when we open up. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be open up for the whole week. Then we do weekends through April and May until uh, Memorial Day. Then we open up seven days a week from Memorial Day to Labor Day. We're here every day. Mm -hmm. And then after Labor Day, we the attractions again open up on weekends through Columbus Day. And then after Columbus Day, we go into uh, Haunted Train for two weekends before uh, Halloween. Mm -hmm. And then we have about two or three weeks to get everything ready for the holidays. Yeah. So it's always busy at Look Park. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for uh, for spending time today. And thank you. again, I've, I've really enjoyed, um, since becoming mayor, um, being on the board and learning a lot of, more about the park than I, than I knew before. Obviously, I came here as a kid and have brought my own kids here, but it really is just an amazing place, and we are you. obviously, um, you know, continue to be grateful to, to Fannie Look for the, for the foresight she had to mm -hmm. really create this beautiful park that's been shared by generations of uh, not only Northampton residents, but, you know, Pioneer Valley residents. Oh, yes. so, uh, so thanks for spending time and Thank you thanks much. for the good work you do. And I'll remind people for more information about the park, you can go to lookpark.org and learn about all the great programs. And, and again, you can learn about some of the ways that, uh, you know, if you want to help to contribute to some of the programming or to some of the projects like the Memorial Fountain Project, there are ways to do that. Um, and again, uh, uh, thank you for watching the Mayor's Report. Uh, we'll be back again soon, and if you have ideas about other um, areas of interest or projects or things that we're working on in the city that you'd like to learn about and you'd like me to do a show about, please send me an email at mayor at northamptonma.gov or you can call my office at 413-587-1249. Thank you again for watching the Mayor's Report.